Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. It's really nice to be here. And it's nice to see all of you here again and uh, actually be on a physical meeting. I have really longed for, for having that chance. Uh, I will, over the fi uh, coming 15 minutes, give you a glimpse of a fantastic Swedish green tech company, fast growing with a, a, a great opportunity. But I will start in the end to uh, ask you all in this room if you have figured or if you have thought about getting an electric vehicle. Has anybody in here thought of getting an electric vehicle or already bought an electric vehicle? Good to see, good to see. You're not alone, I could tell you. There is a lot of electric vehicles out there now, bought and on our road. What's the most common question uh, with, uh, among people buying an electric vehicle? Reach, where do I charge? Do I have the enough capacity to do that? Uh, will I do it at home or could I go to my parents-in-law and charge at their place? Because the prices for electricity now is going sky high, extremely expensive. I would say that among my friends and where I'm talking, everybody is more or less talking about an electric vehicle. And they're also talking about how and where do I charge this electric vehicle. It means that you need to take control over your electrification. Everything we are doing now at the moment is about getting more electrified. And I would say over the last terrible weeks in the world, I would say that this will even maybe put higher demands and requirements on the electrification going forward. If you look into the statistics on Bill Sweden in Sweden, I would say that I just read it the other day that 52% approximately of all cars sold in January, February this year was electric in some way. More than 25% was pure electric. This is only talking about the personal vehicle, but if you also add on all the other vehicles around us in the society, the last mile transportation, as well as the uh, um, public transportation in front, uh, buses, etc. It's a, it's a huge challenge for, for our society going forward to handle the electrification. This means that a lot of us is thinking about taking control over our uh, electricity, our renewable energy. We are adding on solar energy on our buildings. We are adding on uh, wind, other renewable energy sources into our system. This puts also a lot of requirements on the system. Uh, uh, a facility owner today are facing a lot of challenges that they didn't do just a few years back in time. They need to take control over their electricity. They need to handle the cost for the, the uh, renewable energy into their uh, facilities. They need to handle the fact that it will be even more crucial for the tenant than for the, the, the customers to the facility to have access to uh, electricity and electric power when they need it. They need to make sure that the facility is future-proofed so that they could add on and build out uh, when they need or uh, if the need uh, will expand over time. They need to be able to make sure that we could continue investing in our facilities so that we could go forward and expanding and also giving our customers the, the op uh, opportunity. To do this and to take control of the, uh, of the electrification, you need to get data, you need to get knowledge about your, your facility's consumption and production of electric power and electric energy. You need to be a prosumer, you need to both produce as well as uh, um, consume. And one good thing which many European countries is talking about now is to make sure that we could handle sharing of energy and energy uh, power out in the nodes on the grid. Because the grid itself would take too long time to build, uh, build out so that we need to make sure the facility owners, facilities out on the nodes could share electricity. Therefore, there are new rules that has been introduced in Sweden and Netherlands and other European countries also to make sure that it's possible to share energy out in the nodes. And this is where Ferramp comes into play, this fantastic Swedish company. We are a fast-growing clean tech company over, uh, offering a possibility for facility owner to take control over their electrification. 
Uh, the facilities, different uh, facilities like uh, homes, real estates and industries. And the core of our uh, system solution is the energy hub. It's a patent solution. You can see a picture of, of a small version going into uh, a villa, a small villa. It's a patent technology, uh, but it also offers a possibility to connect the grid in the facility with all the production and the consumption of electric energy in the facility. It also is a connected device, so it gives you the opportunity to have high resolution, real-time data to control and monitor your need. We have a scalable product offering uh, for different types of buildings. As I said, this is a small version for a villa. It could be scaled up to a much larger facility. It could be built out over time, so you could start your investment investment in your facility in, in a certain amount, and then you could scale over time. I said we are a fast-growing company. Uh, our first invoice to customer was sent approximately 2016-17. We have, over the last years, grown. Last year, we ended up in 110 million second turnover. We left 2021 with a record big order book and the order intake for 2021 growth with more than 120%. And the good thing here is that uh, we have now proven our technology by having 3,400 installations of systems out in customer premises and facilities uh, in Sweden. Most of these are in Sweden, some are in Norway, a few in Netherlands and some other places just for testing. But it's proven, it's up and running, it's supporting and giving 3,400 facilities electricity control. <coughs> As I said, the company is, is more than 10 years old. We started 2010, the first patent was granted 2013, and the first customer invoice was sent 2017. We are moving from a pure hardware company into a solution, uh, customer offering uh, customers uh, a, a service solution, including both a hardware uh, portfolio, making ability to control, but also a software portfolio. Uh, we have over last years outsourced our production, meaning that we now are scaling up our ability to serve the market in much higher volume than we had before. Up to last year, we produced uh, everything ourselves in Sponga, just outside Stockholm. Now we have three uh, large partners that will also support us in, in industrialization, and, um, um, cost reduction program, and handling the really challenging component situation on the world market. I said 3,400 system. We are now increasing our market presence rapidly, and we have a scalable solution uh, and a, a stable solution that is now certified for future or further uh, expansion. So as I said, it starts with the energy hub connected uh, the facility to the the net, also giving the opportunity to. Uh, connect all the production and the consumption in the facility. The energy storage, the EV charger, and other loads and producers in the facility. But it also gives the opportunity for different uh, facilities to connect with each other and share, for example, an investment in energy storage or PV power. And on top of this, we have the energy management system, the high-resolution data generated in uh, regarding both production and consumption. So this is a glimpse of our product portfolio. The energy hub, we have a, a range of uh, different type of energy storage, different sizes. We have the solar string optimizer connecting solar power to, uh, to this uh, to the energy hub and to the house. And, and at the top, we have a cloud-based energy management system. And it's where actually here the magic happens. This system gives the opportunity for the facility owner to sort of move electric energy both in time and space. And what do I mean by that? It means that you could take charge over when and how you are using your electric capacity. You could choose to charge your electric vehicle, coming back to the first question, very fast if you want to, but also you could choose to charge it when it's as cheap as possible. Or you could, uh, using PowerShare, 
uh, connect with a neighbor and uh, share your PV production to your neighbor's need, if so. And this is a really, uh, I would say, uh, important thing going forward in the electrification, to be able to handle the, the peaks in power in the facilities. This is the really bottlenecks going forward, to be able to control the peaks that you have in your, in your uh, capacity need. This is just a glimpse of the power share. For example, there could be a, a local area with different houses that has different patterns in usage, different needs over time, and that we are placed in, in a, a better or during time better position when it comes to PV production. We have a couple of installations where we, for example, have some houses uh, are better production on PV power when the, the usage is uh, in, in other buildings. So they could share between each other. We have in this picture small villas, larger real estates and an industry that has different patterns uh, over the day and could share this um, energy between each other. This is also actually a patent solution that Ferramp has. We have, uh, Tesla has the patent, uh, patent for this in Northern America, and we have uh, the remaining world. So we think a ver this is a very crucial thing for us going forward, to be ability to, to make sure that not only controlling within the facility, but also between facilities. So all in all, we are facing a market with some really str strong market drivers. There we are changing from uh, facilities being pure dumb consumers of electric energy uh, into giving the uh, real estate and facilities the opportunity to take control over their electrification. Meanwhile, we are uh, expanding the use of, of electric energy. We also give uh, a, a possibility to explore new business models for a facility owner, to make sure that we could meet the different needs of the different consumers in the building, uh, as well as connecting different type of renewable energy sources. So the nodes goes from being dumb uh, consumers into smart prosumers in the new electric system. We give the customer uh, groups uh, both business to business as well as business to consumer and EV charging owners the uh, ability to take control, to monitor and to handle their electrification. We give them uh, high resolution data that they could integrate with other type of systems, uh, giving a possibility to handle their way forward. We are also giving them the possibility to to be future-proofed in that matter that they could scale their system over time, as well as having the opportunity to add on new producers and consumers over time. Coming back to, uh, to our system, it's uh, future-proofed. Uh, it's gradually uh, possible to build out. It minimizes the investment cost, and by that I mean that the investment cost in different type of hardware solution is minimized. You could start up with one system and then you could gradually build out. If you have started up with an energy hub system in your house, you could always add on both PV power, uh, scale up the PV power, energy storage, EV charging and get access to that. And you get help in, uh, in the measurement of the data uh, in how to do this in a, in a cost effective way. We are using the direct current technology, DC technology, uh, that is giving the opportunity to control the electricity much better, but it also uh, gives less conversation losses. All of this creature that is in the system now, like PV power, wind, elect uh, energy storage, as well as electric vehicles, are DC um, animals, as we say. They are uh, run with DC. So uh, if we could handle everything on the DC side, we don't need to, uh, to convert uh, between AC and DC. We just do it once uh, when we do this. Um, we have a couple of patents. One is the most important patent is the, uh, the phase balancing patent. So Ferramp as a company, we have grown uh, rapidly. We are now well positioned. 
with a scalable product offering. We are moving from being a hardware only selling company into system solutions company. We are selling the opportunity and the possibility for a facility owner to take control over the electrification in a world that is rapidly changing into a new different way of handling with a, a large different way of, of customer needs. It's a, a modular, scalable platform. You could, as a facility owner, scale over time your platform and invest over time. On top of that, we have an, uh, an uh, cloud-based uh, energy as a service uh, platform uh, with high resolution data in real time. We have a proven uh, technology on a proven business model. Uh, it's a scalable business model that we could expand going forward. Uh, we have future-proved installations. We have more than 3,400 installations, and we have a rapid growth. We are now ready to take the company to the next level and scale this business going forward. That was all I had today. Uh, so thank you very much for listening, and I guess there are some questions. Yes, hope. there is, Christo. Uh, first, my first question is in terms of circularity and end of life yes. and, and replacing. Um, but what, what, what can you tell us about your, your take in terms of circularity? There is, of course, always the, this topic that needs to be addressed. Absolutely. Um, you mean in circularity in form uh, of as, our as taking in, uh, care of... Exactly, we, uh, yeah. as, as, as in your products, when they need to be repaired, replaced, yeah. in terms of battery replacement, etc. We have, uh, as it is today, uh, um, uh, uh, building out a, a, a circular model of mm -hmm. taking care of, of the full life cycle of our products. We'll, uh, we are focusing on uh, a sustainable chain of, of activities over that period. So that will be handled over time. That is one part that we have build, been building out over this. Yep. Excellent. And we are working uh, going forward with partners taking care of, of uh, a lot of this. So the, the different type of modules we have will also be in focus for. Mm. You mentioned Sponja and that you have uh, moved into other uh, other ways of manufacturing. Where do you where do you manufacture now? We manufacture on three different locations, uh, mainly in the world. Uh, two of those are in Sweden. The third is in China. We are of course continuously evaluating that that the Chinese uh, location was chosen before. Uh, mm. I could say the the world changes a little bit, and but we have that on uh, on our radar in in continuously evaluating that. Mm -hmm. Two locations in Sweden. I say that we are going for a supply chain that will be close to to where we are operating at the moment. So, a final question: If you if you were an average house homeowner, uh, uh, the cost, just an estimate, and the return on investment. If you want to purchase an entire system like you presented here. Roughly, in term return of investment for for, it, a fam for a family. Yeah, it differs a lot, of course, but mm -hmm. it depends on on your uh, need and what you add on. But the return on investment for 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 example, for an inv uh, on the pure Ferran products is quite rapidly. It's going from from a little bit of a larger facility within less than a year. Uh, if you are a villa, that you will have a return on investment on a couple of years' time. On, on the so that's quick. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. quick. Excellent. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you.